welcome back to lecture series on heat transfer operation subject we studied the module 1 that is steady state conduction in the last lecture we study the conduction through the pipe that is cylinder and conduction through the sphere so a single cylinder and single sphere from that how the heat is transferred we look at the equation for it and we derive that equation for a single cylinder and for a single sphere also we see the analogy between the heat transfer heat and the uh, the electrical analogy in today's lecture we look out the comp uh, the equation for the composite wall as well as we see the equation for the composite cylinder before start the lecture just look at the thought let's spend for 30 seconds for it we cannot learn without the pen that is by the aristotle so the topic name it is thermal resistance of infinite composite slab now up till we look out the single cylinder single slab and the sphere now when it is a composite slab what is the equation for it because when we call it is a composite slab composite cylinder means we have to add uh, another material uh, to wrap that particular wall to wrap the um, uh, the cylinder or the sphere one every industry when there is a piping we have to carry out the steam or the hot liquid cold liquid and in this case we don't want to lose the heat from the pipe in such cases we have to give a insulation and that particular insulation that is because we have given the insulations on it with a different material and as we know that different materials have the different conductivity and again the heat transfer rate is different so what happen when i am wrapping the one layer two layer three layers of the different material and uh, then definitely we try to reduce the heat transfer rate from this either to the slab or to the a pipe one here we look out the thermal resistance of infinite composite slab so just look at the picture this is uh, one slab or we call it is a plate having particular thickness then wrap another uh, slab and the third slab so we here deal with the three slabs the one two and three and we consider that the the fluid is flowing from the uh, the left hand side and another fluid is flowing from the the right hand side and they have a particular conduction and the convection part so let's take the k1 uh, is the conductivity of the material uh, for the that uh, the it is a blue color slab then for the next uh, composite uh, slab it having the conductivity k2 and the another it having the k3 so k1 k2 and k3 all these have the different conductivity for the different slab obviously there is a certain thickness for it so let's consider the x1 is the thickness for the conductivity k1 material x2 is the thickness for the conductivity k2 material and the third slab which having the thickness is x3 that is we consider x1 x2 and x3 are the thicknesses of the the slab now let's the heat is transferred from the left hand side okay so here we consider the the surface temperature at this portion it is t suffix w1 then as the hot surface from the left hand side and cold from the right hand side so it is transferred from the left to right okay so obviously it is reduces the heat so at this portion the junction between the the first material and the second material which having the temperature tw2 that is the consideration for the uh, solving the equation then again the heat is reduced from this junction to the, the second and third slab junction where the temperature is TW3 and the lastly uh, the between the the surface of the slab and the surface uh, of the fluid it is TW4 so the temperature at this point it is TW1 at this point TW2 and at this point it is TW3 and TW4 and then this is the portion of the fluid 
So let's consider the temperature of the fluid uh, which is flowing through the left hand side. It is T1 and on the right hand side of this, uh, the, the schematic diagram, it is fluid at T2. Let's consider the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient for the fluid which is flowing from the right hand side. It is the H1 and the fluid which is flowing through the, 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 uh, this, uh, the right hand side, it is H2. The heat transfer coefficient S2 for this particular fluid which is flowing and H1 for this. Now to solve the any equations, obviously we learn the heat analogy and the electrical anal uh, the heat and electrical analogy. Okay, so we take this part in terms of the resistances. What are the various resistances for this particular uh, the the condition? That is, the fluid is flowing. It gives the heat transfer coefficient, the conductivity of the one material, second material, and third material, and the con uh, heat transfer coefficient of the another fluid. So this full fluid with high temperature and this fluid at low temperature. So let's look at what are the resistances in it. So one resistance that is resistance is what? It is the the force that is try to reduce the heat transfer rate. It is resisting resistancing that part. So the first it is this fluid and the surface one. So there is one resistances and that resistances is by the convection one. So we write this is R convection. Then another R convection that is for this particular fluid which is flowing from the right hand side. So the two resistances is by the convection mode and the remaining three, one, two and three, obviously the heat is transferred through this material as it is a solid material. So it is a conduction from this one, the conduction from this one, the conduction. So we write this as the resistance conduction for the first material, for the second material and for the third material. So there are total five resistances here. Okay, so there are five resistances, two resistances from the convection part and the three resistances is by the conduction one. Now, according to the Newton's law of heat flow between the solid surface and, uh, and the fluid is analogous to the Fourier's law for the heat conduction. And according to we have a statement is heat, it is stated that when a fluid at a temperature is in contact with the solid surface at a different temperature, the heat flux from surface to the fluid is proportional to the temperature. Now heat flux is what? It is the heat trait upon the, the surface area of heat transfer that is Q by A capital Q by capital A that will give the heat flux and this heat flux is again denoted by small Q. So what is it state that when the fluid at a temperature is in contact with the solid surface at a different temperature the heat flux from the surface to the fluid surface to the fluid is proportional to the temperature means Q by A is proportional to the a temperature one. So obviously there is a the resistances or the, the, the resistances that is one is the heat transfer coefficient that one factor for the convection part and the K conductivity is uh, the another factor for the, 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 the heat, heat that is flow through the solid material. Now what is the equation as we know that uh, generalized equation for the, the heat transfer uh, through, uh, according to the Fourier's law is Q by A that is heat flux is equals to the H, H is the heat transfer coefficient into in bracket the temperature differences, temperature near to the wall that is Tw, T suffix W and temperature at of, of the uh, bulk fluid that is T infinity and we consider this is the equation number one. Similarly, we have to write the other equations uh, as per the, the conditions given. So we can write if it is a convection part then it is Q by A equals to the H into T1 minus Tw1. So T1 is the temperature of the fluid at the left hand side and the surface contact to the, the fluid it is Tw1. So this is the temperature where the surface temperature which is contact to the, the fluid flowing through the left hand side that is considered the Tw1. Okay. Similarly for the conduction part obviously the first it is a heat transfer through the con uh, convection one. The, the resistance is by the convection part. 
then the resistance by the conduction part here we can write the equation as per the Fourier's law q by a equals to the k1 the conductivity of the first material upon x1 into tw1 minus tw2 where tw1 is the temperature of the surface first uh, slab at the left hand side and tw2 is the, the uh, temperature at the junction between the first material and the second material that is the slab first slab and the second slab in between that is the tw2 similarly we can write these equations as per the the conditions given and then finally we have to add all these equations because we are uh, deriving the equation uh, for the steady state condi uh, condition and at steady state condition we know that the value the heat rate is no, not change with respect to the time so after writing the equation we got this uh, the addition we got this particular equation so let's look at how uh, this uh, part we have to get it uh, by a simple calculation so look at this particular figure it is showing the compute three slabs the fluid which is flowing one fluid another fluid which is flowing let's consider this is the cold fluid and let's consider this is the hot fluid flowing okay now the equation is state that as there is a one two three four five resistances so we write the equation in terms of q by a because the q is constant and area is constant because we consider considering here a steady state conditions so we write it is for the convection part we write h yes, heat transfer coefficient then a is there and the temperature difference what is the temperature difference here the temperature difference of this fluid which is t1 minus temperature at this surface so tw1 so it is notation we given it is tw1 so this is the first equation similarly i am writing the heat transfer between the this uh, solid surface so here the temperature difference is tw1 and tw2 how again we can write the equation as q by a is equals to the uh, here instead of the con convection now the resistance is by conduction so conduction it is k1 by x1 because the k1 is the conductivity of the material and x1 is the thickness of that slab into what is the temperatures here now tw1 twt because at this surface this portion that we consider this particular portion that we consider that's why we write it is tw1 minus tw2 and again as we are writing this one heat is transferred from the hot surface to the cold one and the direction of heat flow is from this side similarly i have to write instead of the k1 i am writing here And at this portion, I am writing as K2, the another material, and this is X2. And the temperature is now at this surface because we are calculating the heat transfer between this surface. Between, say, so let's consider this is a green surface. From this green surface, it is TW2. So instead of TW1, TW2, and here the temperature is TW3. So here TW3. So what we write Q by A that is a constant term is equal to the K2 by X2 into the TW2 is the temperature at this surface and temperature TW3 at this one. Similarly, I have to write the equation for the K, uh, another third surface and for the fluid I can again write the same as here H1 is given so I am writing here H1 and for this particular case I am writing it is H2 into that is what the temperature TW4 minus T2 because this is the temperature of the fluid. So when we add all the equations, the heat transfer by convection, heat transfer by convection, heat transfer by conduction, heat transfer by conduction, heat transfer by conduction, we got the, the equation 
that is addition of it. So here we got this equation by addition of it that is q is equals to the t1 minus t2 upon 1 upon a 1 upon h1 heat transfer convection heat transfer by conduction heat transfer by conduction heat transfer by conduction plus heat transfer by convection now this resistance may be vary it is not necessary there are the three resistances if there are the four resistances then i can write x1 by k1 x2 by k2 plus x3 by k3 and if another surface is at then i write x4 by k4 so this is the infinite one how many uh, the slabs or the the resistances that how you have to put it accordingly you can write it now i just simplify this one what is the uh, resistance total so i can write this r in this format 1 upon h1 a1 plus 1 upon x1 k x1 by k1 a so this is the total resistances of it and if i have to simplify this equation then i can write q is equals to the u a t1 minus t2 what is that u u is stands for the overall heat transfer coefficient overall heat transfer coefficient means the heat transfer inside the uh, this inside inner side and heat transfer outer side addition of all these one that is give the overall heat transfer coefficient okay that part we will look at in the the the, the, the next modules uh, when the we learn the heat exchangers and all but here we can write this equation in this format and after that one if we have to modify this equation by comparing the equation number two and equation number three so we got comparing of it it will give this particular equation that u is equal to 1 upon 1 upon h1 plus x1 by k1 plus x2 by k2 k2 and 1 upon h1 upon h2 and again obviously say there is one mistake you have to write x3 by k3 because here we are considering three resistances of it but there are three slabs composite slabs of it thank you very much for watching this uh, video uh, in the next video we uh, learn the the heat transfer between the composite cylinder thank you